Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak and today I'm going to show you how to make Beef Wellington. Beef Wellington is one of those classic yet elegant dishes but simple enough that you can make in your own home. First we're going to start off with the beef. We need to season both sides of the beef tenderloin and I like to do five to six ounce portions on the beef and I'm seasoning salt and pepper being generous with it. And then we're going to have our pan and we're going to turn it on to high heat. I've had it preheating a little bit now, so I'm going to add some oil. And we're going to sear the beef in this pan. You want to sear the beef because what happens is the beef will actually be encased in puff pastry. So any further cooking of the beef will be a gradual cooking. The, the key when it goes in the oven is to one, warm everything up, get heat going through the meat, but if you sear the meat, you're going to get a texture on that meat. It's going to caramelize it. There's going to be more flavor there, and you can control how done that beef gets, even though it's wrapped up in puff pastry. It's almost like we're going to cook it to a point here. We know it's going to go a little bit further, but we can control how far we do that by how long or what we do in, in this pan and how we cook it. So I'm going to sear the beef. Again, I'm listening for that noise, that high sizzle. Also, you can start to smell that pepper starting to cook. Let that go. We want it to brown up. It's going to probably be two minutes per side. And we're just going to sear the two flat sides, not the actual edges around it. So we'll come back in two minutes and we'll take a look at this. Our beef is now seared on both sides with that beautiful color on top. And I added a couple more pieces into the pan so that everybody can get a piece for, uh, for dinner tonight. The next step is to let that cool down. And it's not going to take long because you've only seared two sides. But I am going to keep this pan going. So I'm going to, I am, I'm going to lower that temperature to a medium heat because I'm going to use all that flavor that's in the bottom of the pan to make a sauce for this. I'm going to add one tablespoon of shallots. I'm going to deglaze the pan. With some red wine and I'm going to allow that red wine now to reduce shallots to caramelize a little bit and it's basically going to pick up everything on the bottom of the pan. The other thing I can do is I can take a spatula and I can scrape up the bottom of that pan to pick up all those little particles on the bottom. The French call it fond, it's just more flavor. We'll let that reduce in the pan like so. The next step is we need uh, puff pastry. And I have two squares that I've already rolled out of puff pastry. You can buy your own puff pastry at the grocery store. That is totally fine to do it. Um, you just want to roll them out so that they're larger than the piece of beef. So I've already measured the beef against it, looked at it, okay, and then we're going to wrap that up. We want to first season this up or give our beef something else to make this dish really flavorful. And I use Borshin cheese. Now this is a chive and shallot cheese. And you can find it in most uh, delis. It's going to come in little round containers. We'll say Borshin on it and um, it comes in various different flavors. Beef Wellington would not be Beef Wellington without mushrooms. And what I have here is a pot of cooked down mushrooms. In a few of my other recipes I've made uh, mushroom duck cells. We're going to put the borscht on first on the puff pastry, then we're going to put a little layer of the mushroom duck cells or uh, cooked mushrooms. And the next step is to add the beef. So it quite Right now it's fairly simple to do this and it's a very simple dish in general, it's just you got to know all your steps that go into it. Have a little bit of uh, planning ahead, like having the mushrooms cooked and buying the puff pastry. At this point we're going to fold up the puff pastry around the beef and the mushrooms. And it's okay to have it overlap a little bit. And this is what I mean by a little bit. You see my 
tails are coming in, tightening up, and we're going to flip it over. We'll do the same thing with this one. Again, fold in those sides, bring the tails up, fold it over, bring the sides, tail up, and then make sure you do turn it over so the non-folded side is on the bottom and your smooth side is on top. I have some egg whites here. And I've seen um, beef wellington done where it's the whole tenderloin seared and then covered up in uh, puff pastry. We're just doing again the little tenderloin uh, medallions or the filet mignon if you will of it. But puff pastry is essential, the mushrooms, the cheese inside is essential and then also brushing it with a, lit, a little of uh, the egg whites. This helps seal it in. I will go over my underside as well. And at this point, these are ready to be baked. They won't take long. We're looking for the puff pastry to brown up a little bit, expand a little bit in size. So we're going to give them somewhere between 8 and 12 minutes in a 400 degree oven. We'll come back and check on these in a little bit. While the beef is cooking, we have about 8 more minutes before we're ready to plate up. Uh, my sauce, my, my red wine is reduced. It's got a very nice, deep, rich color. Our next step is to add our, our stock. And I'm going to use some just uh, roasted chicken stock that we make. Whenever you're adding stock to any sort of sauce, you want to bring it up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, We'll bring it back down to a simmer and we'll simmer it till it's reduced by half, which will probably take all of the eight or nine minutes that the uh, beef is in the oven. Our 12 minutes are up and our beef wellingtons look great. Nice color on them. Uh, be very careful. You can serve them up right now. Uh, they are extremely hot. What you're going to look for is make sure there's even browning all the way around. The cheese is going to be melting, so if you see anything white coming out, that, that might be the cheese oozing out too. Hopefully it's all contained. Um, and really at this point it's time to plate up. Check our sauce. Um, they're in good shape. You can either pour the sauce directly on top, put it on the plate, and then put this in the middle. I think I'll probably wind up doing it that way on this. Grab a plate. The beautiful thing about beef wellingtons is that they are like meals in themselves, but they lend themselves to so many great vegetables, carrots. Uh, you don't really need another starch, so you can omit any sort of root vegetables or anything like that. But uh, uh, carrots or even um, asparagus would go well, green beans, some garlic. Be creative with what you pair this with. But again, they, they work so well by themselves, we'll just uh, serve them up this way. I do want to cut into one of them and show you what it looks like on the inside. I'm going to take the big guy here. If you are going to cut this for your guests, you're going to have to give yourself some time in between actually cooking it and then letting it cool down because it's going to be so hot you don't want that cheese to run all over. I think we've given ourselves enough time. It's been probably about five minutes of uh, between cooking and actually cutting into it. Again, be very careful. That cheese is going to be very hot. There you go. You have that nice layer, little pink inside, nice layer of mushrooms. That borson cheese is just starting to ooze down the side there. And I have some chives here. Just 
garnish the plate with that I minced up. There you go. Very elegant meal you can find in almost any restaurant, but now you can make it in your home. Beef Wellington. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chef Pete Truzak. This is Cooking from the Cave.